All right, guys, our next guest is known for having the best hair in not only the UFC, but in MMA in general. He is a fighter and a model, and he's the winner of the Ultimate Fighter Nations Australia vs. Canada. He's none other than Elias Theodoro. Elias, welcome to Submission Radio. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you both for having me. Oh, the pleasure is all ours. Great to have you on the show. You know, it's been a couple of months since you got your last TKO in of uh, Roger Narvaez. Tell us what's been happening in the world of Elias. Uh, well, much the same. It's kind of rinse and repeat, right? But uh, with that being said, I've taken the last month or two to kind of, you know, slowly get back into training and have a little fun, but still get ready for the next one. Well, it's an interesting point that you made there, Elias. I mean, there was a little bit of a break in between fights. So your previous fight being in October before your TKO win. Tell us, what would be the ideal number of fights for you in 2015? Honestly, uh Right now, it's no real rush in the sense that I got to where I am in the UFC. I'm 26, and uh, the average median age for my weight class is somewhere around 30, 31. So, again, it's it's slow and steady wins the race. Now, we want to go back and uh, quickly touch on your season of Ultimate Fighter, Canada versus Australia. Lots of fighters that have been on the show say it's one of the most difficult experiences of their life. Would that be accurate? No, I had fun. Um, it may be, like... Again, I'm a little biased because I won the whole damn thing, right? Mm. So um, it, it's it's a kind of awesome thing. Um, with that being said, um, I'm just kind of honest, honestly honored to be a part of the Ultimate Fighter because that's a moment in my life that I will never be able to relive, and it's a special place in my heart. Again, I'm biased because I won, but even if I didn't win, as long as it, it wasn't too bad of a loss, I would have... Just been happy to be locked in a house with 15 other knuckleheads and have a good time. Well, it really seems like you guys had a great team with a tough uh, Canada versus Australia. You guys had a very tight-knit team, obviously, Chad LaPreece, Auburn Messier on the team as well. Do you still keep in touch with many other guys? And would you say possibly it's one of the tightest-knit groups that we've seen on Tough so far? No, that's exactly it. Um, key in the fact that four of the guys were either from uh, TriStar or affiliated with it. Um, if half the team already trains with each other and are friends, and a couple other guys that end up clicking, it's it's pretty much the whole battle, right? Um, mm. I, with that being said, I've been I've been lucky enough to spend a bunch of times at uh, TriStar with all the guys and just training for the same the same goal, you know, being better. And uh, we've also lucked out where a bunch of our fights have timed in the same time, so it's just been a good time. Yeah. Now, uh, Tough Canada versus Australia was big here in Australia, but it slipped under the radar a little bit in the, in America. Were you at all bummed that even though you won, many of the American fans, MMA fans, still didn't really know much about you? Uh, yes and no. I, I understand it. America is a very proud country, and they've been, I don't know, known for not really knowing much other than their backyard, right? Known in their backyard. Mm. So, um, with that being said, honestly, I'm... I, I'm just privileged to be a part of the show and who did watch it, I thank you very much. And uh, honestly, I, I, I wore my, my country's flag during the whole time um, and I won. So it's just the idea that even though many people didn't see it in America, uh, I fought for Canadians and I'm glad they saw it. Yeah, no, it's a special thing being able to fight for your country. Let's just speak about your fight style for a second, Elias. Obviously, you're a very exciting fighter. You've got a good grinding style. But one of the things that you're known about is some of your theatrics during the fights, like giving your mom a shout out. Uh, let, tell us a little bit about when did you first tap into this kind of approach during fights? And is it something that makes you more comfortable in the cage, being able to sort of do these kinds of things while fighting? Oh, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Uh, I get to be myself. I'm a silly, silly man child. And uh, basically my, my style emulates uh, basically myself in the sense that uh, I'm silly and I would like to think outside of the box. I, I've been the kind of person, I have a little bit of ADD and basically sticking to a, a set thought process doesn't really work for me. So if I can just be fun and be silly, I'm just being me. Certainly. Now, you know, one of the things that you haven't had yet is a heated rivalry. Just wondering, obviously, a lot of your opponents have been really, really nice guys. Would you still have that sort of relaxed, uh, sort of goofy approach in your fights if you did have somebody that you really genuinely didn't like and you were fighting in the octagon? Yeah, I, I would just be myself. I Honestly, I love my job and I get to live the dream wide awake. So even if uh, someone, let's say, didn't like me, and even if I didn't like them, 
uh, I'm going to keep calm and cool because anger is just a finite resource and it's chestnut checkers. I need to honestly be in focus when I do what I always do, win. Sure. Now, Elias, people know you as the confident MMA fighter, ultimate fighter, nation's winner and model. You know, I'm curious, how has MMA impacted your modeling career? <laughs> well, it's been good because, uh, like I always say, the, not looking like you've been in a fight is the best part about being in a fight. And I, I've been lucky to kind of double down and get a couple of auditions like a week uh, prior to my fight and no black eye, I get to go in. Now, it's interesting because we had Bass Rutten on the show, and I don't know if you know this or not, but fighting actually brought an end to his modeling career. He had too many bruises and black eyes. How often do you still model? Is it still a part-time thing for you, or do you spend just as much time in modeling as you do training and fighting? Well, I'm a fighter first and foremost, so I kind of... I, I'm always going to focus on fighting because, again, you can only be a fighter for so long because it, it's as a sport, a competitive sport, it has a expiration date on it. So I'm focusing all my time mentally, physically, and emotionally into fighter because fighting because I am a fighter, like I said. Um, but now, the last couple of months, I've been booking a couple of gigs and I have a couple of ones in the near future. And uh, I'm looking forward to just honestly playing with that. Um, fighting is one aspect of my life but it's not the only aspect of my life and i get to again live the dream wide awake and sometimes that's not only fighting so the next couple months i'm i'm gonna kind of push more into the modeling acting and even stunt work because uh that's something i i can do it's good that you've got other things to sort of occupy yourself when you're not training for a fight and things to take your mind off it and obviously modeling being something fun what would happen if you hypothetically got like a big cut on your face from a fight would you be worried about that and how it would affect uh affect you when it comes to modeling <laughs> not really uh, as long as the bone structure kind of keeps in place it'll kind of work <laughs> out and besides chicks Chicks dig scars. Right. Uh, you don't have to tell me that again. Now, let's talk about your hair. I feel like it's the type of hair that might be insured for large amounts of money. Uh, for all the Aussie and international fans listening right now that, you know, their hair isn't quite up to the standard that it should be. What goes into maintaining such luscious locks? <laughs> well, I wouldn't know, but I wouldn't say that. Every, every, everybody's beautiful in their own way. And um, what I would say with my hair, I've kind of just gifted with wicked genetics uh, i haven't done too much about, to my hair again i i treat obviously i do the usual shampoo the lathering and all that fun stuff but honestly i'm not that big of a i i don't spend that much time i'm i'm i hate to say this but i kind of woke up like this wow there's a lot of jealous guys right now including leota machida who has the uh head and shoulders uh uh, sponsor. Now, Elias, my hairdresser tells me that onion and garlic make your hair oily. Given your Greek background, those might be two things that are tough to avoid. But did you know this and do you avoid eating them? Uh, no, I did not know this. But uh, thank you for sharing that because uh, you learn something new every day, right? There you go. Um, no, I, I eat a typically good diet, especially when in training. So, it, it, again, you are what you eat. And I guess garlic gives you oily hair. So, I'm not a garlic breath individual. Now, let's, let's get back to uh, fighting. We were there at UFC Adelaide on point when you got called out by Smiling Sam Alvey. First of all, first question is, did you watch the fight and what did you think of Sam's performance? Yeah, no, I watched it. It was it was a great, great performance. Again, Sam did, was successful at uh, doing what he does. He takes the opportunity to use his heavy hands when his opponents kind of just run into them. Um, all the power to... For, to um, What's his name? Dan. Dan okay. Kelly. Uh, Dan Kelly. Yes, it is. Dan Kelly. In the sense that he was on the show. He's a great person, a, a father, and, and a great martial artist. Let's not forget he's had four times in the Olympics representing your country, and he I think he placed up to six. So he was a, he's an accredited, an accredited mixed martial artist. And uh, with that being said, poor game plan. He walked into the, the strength of your opponent, and he paid for it. Uh, again, my hat's off to Sam, but... Ooh, that's about it. <laughs> well, Sam's pretty keen on fighting you. You know, according to your Facebook, you posted an article of the call-out and wrote, but will he still be smiling after I beat the ginger out of him? What did you think of the call-out? Did you expect it? And will you take, will you be taking Sam up on his bet of his offer of a hair versus hair match? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saw it. I saw it. Um, at this point, it, it makes sense because, again, he's calling me out and it's a, it's a planned idea. It's not by mistake that he's calling me out. Uh he has that chip on his back, on his shoulder rather, that he didn't uh, pan out and tough, and he wants to take out all the tough winners or 
tough uh, participants in general. Um, it, it's smart. Um, going into the just the idea of the fight itself, I'm I'm always willing to fight anyone. But let's not forget, he's only getting airplay because of me. He he's getting any type of attention because he's using my name. So let's put that all in perspective. Um, he has a great accomplished record, and um, it's the case where he has a, he has blemishes and a bl- blueprint to beat him, where I don't. And for me, I, I would always be interested in fighting someone. Um, it's just at this point in my career, I'm actually looking to grow because the, the point I am in is I'm always going to be playing catch up. I've only been doing martial arts for five years of my life, and I want to not be rushed in any way, shape or form when to fight. I dictate when I fight. And if he's willing to wait, I'm willing to give him another loss. It's an interesting point you bring up there, Elias. Just want to expand on that. I mean, how, how long would you want to wait? What would be the perfect time frame for you to, you know, fight Sam? Again, no real rush. Um, I'm looking to just be a completely different fighter next time you guys see me. And that's what I've done in all my fights before that. You get a little glimpse of my potential. And potential is one of the worst words in athletics because if you're at your potential, it means you're not doing what you could be doing. So I want to, again, not put any time limits, but there might be some talks in in um, September, October that there might be a Canadian fight, a Canadian card. If that pans out, I'd love to be on a Canadian card and fight in front of my my people, my my fans, my country, and whoever that is, honestly, I, it doesn't matter because I'm going to do what I always do, win. Fantastic. And it's great that you're interested in this uh, fight against Sam Alvey. What about his actual offer of the hair versus hair match? We spoke to him afterwards. He said it's a real bet. He's uh, he's looking for you to take take him up on his offer. Would you be interested in doing a hair versus hair v- stipulation? Obviously, between you guys. I'm sure the UFC wouldn't enforce it, but just between you guys. <laughs> no, not at all. First of all, I would not lose because I don't lose. Secondly, his hair is nothing compared to mine. If anything, he um, he's looking for my hair, but I'm coming for his teeth. So that's all I'm saying. So it'll be a hair versus teeth match. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, Elias, but we did an exclusive interview with Sam after the fight. Went over to the hotel room and had a bit of a chat with him. And, you know, they saw your call out that you said basically that, you know, his hair isn't much and your hair is needed for your work. Did you know that Sam's wife, Mickey, is also a model herself and is a former winner yeah. of the American Next Top Model? Well, she actually said that she wants to offer her hair to be shaved in place of Sam's to make it a fair wager. What do you think of that? No, he made his uh, choice and I make mine. Uh, if he really wants to fight me and it works out, I'm going for what I want. Teeth. Teeth. So Mi- Mi- Mickey-, Mickey doesn't have to worry about the hair at all now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now Sam's there for his smile and uh, you come from a world obviously where having the right look is very important what do you think of Sam's smile and could you see him make an appearance in America's Next Top Model <laughs> um, I think he's uh, too big of a, a dude to be a pretty lady but uh, with that being said he has a great smile like all the hat, all the all the kidding aside he actually has a really great smile so um, he's known for great hair I mean, I'm known for great hair his teeth are pretty great as well we can come on in agreements on that just interested as well to hear your thoughts on this whole Tandon sponsorship issue that Sam had. Did you did you get a chance to see him at the way? He was wearing Daisy Dukes and he was also had a Tandon sponsor on his chest. What did you think about it all? It was hilarious. Honestly, he's he just seems like a fun guy. Like regardless if we end up fighting, I don't have to hate someone. Um, I think he's hilarious. I've I've been watching him since he was in an MFC and he was always someone I looked up to. Um, uh, with that being said, obviously he did what he shouldn't have done and. It's one of those things where I think he knew when or, uh, whether or not they would have been uh, happy with it. There was not much they could do about it. So I think it, becoming a story gave it even more publicity. So it worked double time. Let's. Uh, his wife's, I think. I think. Sorry to interrupt. I think him and his wife are really good at uh, just planning, planning their marketable aspect. Uh, again, there's many different um, things that came of this fight. So kudos to them. Completely agree, and it's something that we've spoken about many times on the show before. Um, let's say hypothetically, Sam is the guy that you get matched up with. Stylistically, take us through it. How do you see the fight going between uh, you and Sam? What are some of the advantages that you see yourself having? Well, again, like I, the first and foremost, mindset. He's going to be confident that he's going to beat me. Of course he would. In order to step in a cage, you'd have to have some confidence and do your homework because you feel confident because you did the homework to get in there and ace the test. And so will I. And I'll have the momentum of the idea that I've never lost. 
but there are five perfectly good blueprints to beat him. He's heavy-handed, and I think a lot of his pro- opponents didn't show their basically their cage intelligence and in just veering away from the game plan. I would just go in there, pick him up, and slam him, and rinse and repeat, and uh, just put him on a pace that he can't handle. I've he's been successful in the last three fights in the first round. Honestly, kudos to him. I'm not taking away from that. But there's honestly five blueprints to beat him, but there's none to beat me. It's a great point there, Elias. And, you know, just playing devil's advocate for a second, you're undefeated, but people say one of the biggest issues with your style is you're a little bit of a slow starter. And as you mentioned, Sam's best round is his first one. Does that make you uh, Does that make you think about that in any way? Is that, uh, is that going to be an issue if you do end up fighting him? Uh, well, obviously, there's many issues. I'm going in there confident that I'm going to beat someone, and he's just as confident to beat me. Uh, with that being said, I know that I may be a little bit of a slow starter, but there's a reason behind that. I am figuring you out, and once I do, I win. That's what I do. I have cardio for days, and again, remember, it's chestnut checkers. I don't care if you, like, honestly, like, I have no, what am I trying to say here? Basically in the sense that anyone can get a lucky punch if someone runs into your fist. I'm not, again, I'm not taking anything away from him, and I'm not even specifically saying him. I systematically destroy people. Everyone that I've ever fought, has never won two fights after me, two or three fights after me. I break people. And, yeah, I'm early in my career, but that being said, all I do is win. And, honestly, like, all the power to Sam, he's a great uh, great fighter, and I can never take anything away from him. But I'm a different person. I'm me. I win. This call out sort of came out a little bit out of nowhere. If you don't get matched up with Sam, is there anybody else in the division that you've had your eye on or you'd like to get matched up against? Uh, beforehand, actually, ironically enough, it was another uh, redheaded individual. Um, <laughs> his name was Ed Herman. Um, mm-hmm. He would have been a great opportunity. Um, he lost to Eric, Derek Brunson, but Derek Brunson's been a stud in the last little bit, and he has plenty of uh, experience that I like. Again, the difference between me and both Ed and Sam is the fact that they have 20 plus fights than me. So they're calling out someone fresh. Like, wouldn't you expect in 30 fights that you'd be calling out someone with? equal amount of experience so that's just my little two cents um with that being said honestly i'm a company man and i will fight anyone and everyone uh i am honestly confident in the skills and the team behind me to do what i always do it's interesting and it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out now let's speak about your training for a second you look, like to move around and train in different gyms we saw that you trained at team Nogera not too long ago what was it like training with the legendary Nogera brothers and what was the biggest thing that you learned yeah, I know. I've been blessed and just kind of just seeing the world and taking it in. And I'm a big believer that no gym, no coach, no fighter, no, no one in general has a monopoly on talent and knowledge. And I just wanted to soak up everything like a sponge because as someone that is always playing catch up as a only having five years, uh, five, six, I think now I'm going on to six rather six on my sixth year of martial arts in general. And four of those I've been a professional athlete. Um, I'm playing catch up and with that being said being at the Nogueras was honestly a dream come true I, I've been there this was my second time and the first time I, I went there I went a little bit of an unknown still in the regionals and then to come back two years later to be a UFC fighter and an ultimate fighter winner it, 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 I still pinch myself uh, mm-hmm. every time I went to the every time I went to the Nogueras I would walk by the 2001 the 2003 pride championship uh, trophies and they that was back when I was in high school so just to kind of see where I am now it it kind of just validates something and comes full circle yeah that's amazing Elias you mentioned that you want to focus a little bit on modeling and stunt work just in between fights I'm just curious where are you training now and are there any other gyms that you have your eye on for the future yeah no my home gyms are always Tapo Burlington and uh, Grants MMA uh, in Toronto um, with that said, I, I honestly want to travel the world as long as any gym is willing to have me. There's been a couple of talks um, uh, between me and my coach, and we, we'd love to go to Jackson's and Winkle John. That would be an amazing opportunity if they open their doors to us. And as always, um, going back to TriStar, it's my second home. So th- th- there's a, honestly so many places. I even want to go to – I even want to go to um, – uh, Amsterdam for a bit and train down there and some of the Dutch kickboxing. I just want to learn from everyone. And um, there's even some places in Toronto that I, that I haven't gone to yet that would be an opportunity, a huge opportunity to like 
just grow and learn. I want to go train with Simon Marcus. I want to go train with um, Bazooka Joe. Those are some of the top, if not the top, kickboxers in the world. And it would be an honor to and a privilege to train with them. Yeah, what a great combination of gyms there. Now, we're going to finish off the interview with Elias with something we like to call the Submission Radio Tap Out Round. It's a fun round where we throw some fun questions at you, and you sort of answer with the first thing that comes to mind, a lot like word association. Okay, are you ready? Okay. All right, let's say the UFC do a sexy calendar with a fighter for every month, and you're in charge of picking which other fighters make the cut. Who do you choose? It could be male or female. Who? Um, it just depends on how fun we want to have with it. I think uh, extremely yeah, fun. The most fun. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, obviously, uh, Lyoto Machida and Luke Rockwell just fought for February, and Luke is going to be uh, Mr. Valentine Valentine's Day himself. Yeah. Um, Christmas. Who wouldn't love to take home? I want to be careful what I say here. Now, maybe. <laughs> 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 who wouldn't want Santa? Felicia Heron giving you a present. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Or yeah. she's dressed up with one of her lovely straw weight sexy elves. I don't know. Sure. Um, and then uh, you have a uh, potential um, <laughs> Alistair Overeem as July, Mr. July. That could be pretty steamy. I that see that, yeah, yeah. And uh, honestly, you can have so much more fun with it. Uh, uh, I leave it up to you. <laughs> Roy, Roy, Roy Nelson doesn't get the cut for Christmas. I was going to say Roy Nelson. Ah, maybe, he could maybe. be a sexy Santa himself. Yeah. He could exactly. be a Santa. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, or he could be Santa in July and just shirtless uh, barbecuing something. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Or like a lumberjack outfit. Now, uh, yes. <laughs> Elias, when you won the Ultimate Fighter, you gave the Octagon Girls a few cheeky looks. Uh, anything eventuate from that? Uh, no, no, I... Uh, it was just actually a Simpsons quote. Um, when Homer sees the uh, plow that he wants to buy or whatever the, like that or win, mm -hmm. he kind of just says, uh, do you come with the uh, car? Uh, that's of what course. I said with the trophy. Uh, classic quote. Now, your birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. Any plans yet? How will the Spartan be celebrating his 27th year on the planet? Yes, yes, I will be. Um, I'm actually going to be in Vegas, which is very awesome. Uh, the mm. UFC is bringing down a couple fighters, um, uh, many fighters rather, for a um, just a certain, uh, just kind of like a little event that's going down there or whatever. And with that being said, um, uh, afterwards, uh, a bunch of my friends and I are going to be celebrating in Vegas. Very nice. Now, your nickname is the Spartan Elias. Thoughts on 300 Rise of an Empire? <laughs> I, you know what? It can only be better than the second movie. So uh, hope, hopefully it gets better. Okay, let's talk about uh, UFC Adelaide for a second. During the Hunt Miocic fight, you tweeted out, throw in the towel corner. You're supposed to have his back, hashtag UFC Adelaide. Safe to say you felt the corner really should have thrown in the towel and the fight went a bit too long? Yeah, so does everyone else, I believe. I, I think the, the just everyone would agree that it, Hunt is too much heart for his own good. So it's the corner to kind of Throwing the towel. I think it was originally the sponge. If you go date back uh, original boxing, and that mm. was the idea that that's what you dive like. That's your again. A fighter's in there doing a crazy thing to begin with, and, and in order to have the confidence and honestly balls to do that, you have got to be a little crazy. And that kind of crazy is sometimes too too proud and too stubborn for its own good. I, I think there's been plenty of other fighters that unfortunately their towel should have thrown. I mean, their corner should have thrown in the towel. Uh, Junior DeSantos. And then the contrast when you see with uh, uh, BJ Penn, where he didn't get hurt just as bad, but his brothers, the people that really love him, threw in the mm. towel because um, he will live to have another fight. Whether GSP will, I mean, uh, George, um, not GSP, um, BJ Penn will train for it. That's a different thing entirely. <laughs> but he'll have a different fight. Um, I just think, again, it's our brains and the rest of our life that we have to keeping the balance in the sense that we're putting our brains on the line every single time we step in there and you you want to you want to have a a great life afterwards yeah no that's absolutely all, that's all my completely agree now one of the last few questions elias zoolander is probably one of the most famous and factual modeling movies of all time but we always find ourselves relating to the movie and we're not even models so which of these three following scenarios best describe something that's happened to you all right First scenario, having a petrol fight using the hoses at a local petrol station, walking up to accept an award when your name wasn't actually called out, or running into David Duchovny at a cemetery in the middle of the night? Um, I want to say the, the, the two A and B, 
It happens on the regular. Uh, I just haven't been able to track down David Duchovny to make the trifecta. Sure. I, hard to find. Now, Derek Zoolander also had his trademark move called the Blue Steel. Uh, Elias, share the information with us. What's your trademark move called? Um, <laughs> I don't have a, a trademark. It's just uh, kind of works out that it seems that I'm very phonogenic no matter what the direction or situation. So, um, just you don't have to put any grease or possibly that much Photoshop, which is cool. You're you're a nice guy making uh, making the photo guys jobs easier. No, not much post uh, yeah. post works. Now we like to finish our tap out rounds with a prediction. With this one, let's do a hypothetical. If you and Sam do end up fighting, give us the prediction. How are you winning? Um, I win the way I want to. Um, I'm great at kind of just going with the flow. I like to encompass Bruce Lee's like water and. I win the way it's supposed to win. I'm going to win um, because that's what I do. Fighting without fighting. We can't wait to see it. Hopefully, you guys do get matched up. Guys, don't forget to follow Elias on Twitter at Elias Theodoru. Elias, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for coming on the show. The pleasure has been mine, gentlemen.